The following is a talk I recorded for the Chat Physics Online Conference in 2021 and is entitled Mechanics, the Key to A-Level Physics. I hope this talk is useful for both students and educators. In particular for students, I hope it helps you appreciate the importance of mechanics and helps you assess your understanding of mechanics. Why not check out some of the videos we've created so far on mechanics to help you improve your understanding. If you find the talk useful, Please like the video, share it, and subscribe to the Forest Learn channel. And so now, here's the talk that I recorded. Hi, my name is Suvade, and this is my talk for the Chat Physics Live 2021 online conference. My talk is entitled Mechanics, the Key to A-Level Physics. Uh, before I start, I'd like to thank the organizers for all their hard work in making this event possible, and for giving me the opportunity to deliver this talk. You can connect with me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at ForestLearn, and ForestLearn is also the name of my A-level physics uh, YouTube channel. So before I get into the nitty gritty of my talk, I just want to point out that um, I'm not a teacher in the sense of a classroom teacher. I'm a private tutor. And so this talk is going to be delivered, of course, from my point of view, my perspective, my frame of reference, if you like. Uh, so please just bear that in mind. Also, despite the title of my talk, I don't want to give the impression that mechanics is some kind of silver bullet for negotiating A-level physics successfully. Of course, there's many factors involved in uh, learning A-level physics well. Mechanics happens to be, in my opinion, just a really important factor. So, mechanics is foundational. This is nothing new for uh, educators. The question we need to ask is, how well do our students understand this? And given that mechanics is foundational, what are the implications of this for teaching and learning A-level physics? And really my talk is going to be about um, exploring some of the implications of mechanics being foundational for uh, teaching and learning. So I think as educators we can all agree that we want to provide a unified view of A-level physics. Uh, we want to show the, the subject to be a coherent subject. And so it kind of makes sense to think about what, what, what concepts lend coherence to the subject as a whole. So you can take your pick. Uh, an example is work done. It's a fundamental concept. It appears everywhere. Here's a list of work done formulae from different parts of the course, different, different topics. Now, I'd say the top one is the most basic and fundamental one, right? That's the definition of work done. Uh, so it leads to, from that, you can derive the formulae below it. But perhaps more importantly, mechanics is the topic where uh, the concept of work done is dealt with in full generality. And so I think this leads to the implication that we should strongly consider taking a mechanics first approach in teaching A-level physics. Now again, this is hardly anything new. Uh, many teachers do this or uh, anyway, but it's not a universal choice. And I'm aware that there are some problems with a mechanics first approach which, uh, which lead to teachers perhaps teaching something else first. I'll touch on these issues, these problems, in, in a little bit. So, What's a mechanics first approach good for? So one thing it c can help with, I think, is it can help students perhaps develop a more unified view of the subject. Uh, so for instance, instead of seeing charge times PD as just another formula to learn and be able to use, um, it would be better if students sort of viewed this as just an instance of a more general idea or concept. Often in my teaching, I find that students are unable to explain to me, you know, why half k times extension squared is the work done in stretching a spring. And hopefully with a more solid grasp of mechanics under their belt, um, they'd be able to um, explain things like this. Um, and it's not just about explaining this particular formula, it's about, again, understanding the general principle or concept. Also, there's, there's always the issue of... Um, uh, students being exposed to ideas or concepts that they're not quite in a position to um, 
Tate fully appreciate, and I think a mechanics first approach might help here as well. So, to take an example, um, the stopping potential, part of the photoelectric effect. I find that students don't have any problems in calculating the stopping potential, but when I ask them, sort of, you know, what's going on here, more conceptually, or what, you know, whether they can explain to me why the left and right hand sides should be equal to each other, they they typically struggle. Um, and so I think, you know, here we we need to think really carefully about the the order, the sequencing of topics. I would suggest here we would it would be optimal to take a um, teach mechanics first, followed by electricity, so that students reacquaint them uh, are reacquainted with charge times PD. Um, being one form of work done. Um, and then after that, we can think about teaching the photoelectric effect and the stopping potential. Interestingly, I, I hear echoes of these sorts of conceptual deficiencies in uh, topics further down the line, for example, in electric fields. And you know, you can think of the discharge tube, where students again will str typically struggle to explain, um, you know, conceptually what's going on or struggle to make the link between. Uh, work done and sort of the the the, the problem um, at hand. So as a, as I mentioned, I'm I'm aware there are some issues of a, a mechanics first approach uh, for new year twelve students. A, you know, mechanics can pose a lot of uh, it's it's quite technically demanding. So there's a lot of stuff, new stuff to learn, not just in the physics but also on the math side of things. Um, also, I'm aware that some teachers talk about uh, mechanics being uninspiring to students, and um, it c it can lead to you know students drop dropping out, um, and 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 so on. I don't have any specific uh, solutions to these issues, except to say, perhaps while teaching mechanics, um, if we can sort of draw or point to um, uh, sort of future topics where what they're learning in mechanics connects to those future things that might help for instance in, in when talking about conservation laws um, conservation of energy and momentum perhaps tying that into the more general idea of conservation laws in particle physics for example um, and this all sort of reminds me of a recent exchange I had with a former student who told me that they weren't too bothered about uh, or w weren't too interested in mechanics. They were, they wanted to learn about quantum computing. Uh, they actually did use the word bananas, and really there was only one response I could give to that. So it sort of goes without saying that we of course want to provide students with a solid understanding of mechanics, not just for mechanics' sake, but also for everything which um, depends on a good understanding of mechanics. So obviously part of the solution here is going to be good exposition, uh, lots of relevant practice for students, but also something that perhaps isn't discussed um, as much and that might be quite useful is for us to um, point out common misconceptions to students. Some misconceptions are almost guaranteed to occur and so let's not wait for students to make these misconceptions, let's just do them a favor and actually just point them out from the get-go. So. Uh, here are some examples of common misconceptions. Mass times acceleration. Um, you know, often students will think of that as a force. Another one is uh, it's quite common for students to think that the magnitudes of the normal reaction and weight forces are always equal to each other because they've seen so many examples of that that they start to think that that's some kind of general principle. And when you come to a topic like circular motion, uh, student responses here are really quite revealing. Uh, in, a, in a way you can say all these sorts of misconceptions really, there's a real confluence of them. So here are some typical sort of um, things that students will say for this kind of problem here. And, and these sorts of responses really display the, the, um, the extent of misconceptions of basic mechanics. Another example is Newton's third law. Um, I like posing the problem of just a box sitting on the ground and asking, can, can you tell me something about Newton's third law here? And the the response I almost always get is that R and W are a Newton third law pair. Uh, and of course, this sort of misconception, 
is going to have implications down the line when when you come to something like magnetic fields um, to properly understand why the the reading on the balance changes when when the current you know is either turned on or off in this wire here I, I think it's obvious that if, if students are carrying these sorts of misconceptions in their mind then they're going to have a hard time really understanding what's going on here properly so one thing that I think that can help students um, grasp the, the, the importance of mechanics and also perhaps even better organize uh, their information and knowledge inside their heads is instead of showing pr or presenting the, the spec, the specification as some sort of linear list, um, perhaps a sort of network specification would be, would be better. So this clearly shows the sort of central starring role of mechanics. It's like the central node which connects to virtually everything else in the um, all other topics in 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 the course. Um, by the way, the, the these links aren't supposed to be exhaustive because you know that that would get far too messy. Um, so you know, th I think this could be useful for for a number of reasons. For for instance, if somebody's having issues of gravitational fields, um, then perhaps a student might realize that perhaps the issue is not so much um, you know concepts in gravitational fields perhaps their the, the, the real problem is some underlying problems that they're having with mechanics when I showed this to a, a student of mine they, they also pointed out something interesting which was that they thought that this would be useful uh, uh, to organize their revision as well so you know instead of um, before looking at capacitors it sort of makes sense to have uh, to make sure you, you understand electricity or covered that really well and also electric fields prior to looking at capacitors. So to summarize, uh, students need to understand uh, the fundamental importance of mechanics. That It's obvious to us as educators but we really need to impress it on students. Um, and we should seriously consider the, the order in which we teach things and I've, I've argued for a mechanics first approach in, in in this talk, although as I've noted, it's it's not without its problems. Um, one way we can help students is by pointing out really common misconceptions in mechanics, things that are almost certain to to misconceptions that are almost certain to occur in the minds of most students, um, to to help them develop a um, a better understanding, a solid understanding of mechanics. And finally, I've suggested that instead of viewing this the spec as um, a linear list of topics it might be more useful to view it as a network um, with mechanics as the, the central node which, which clearly shows how important mechanics is in in negotiating a little physics successfully so thank you very much for listening